during office hours, we're going to talk about the four types of economic goods. I've got a grid on the board behind me uh, that we're going to use to figure out which goods should, are easily supplied by the marketplace and which goods should be supplied by the government. Let's start by looking at what we've got here. Um, goods fall into two characteristics. We want to look at the consumptive characteristics of goods, whether that good is rival or non-rival. We want to look whether it's possible to exclude uh, someone who does not pay or not. So in this case, exclusion is possible or it's not. Let's start with the simplest example where we think about a private good that the marketplace is good at producing. Here you might want to think about something like pizza. Pizza is a, a, a good that the market can easily produce because the consumption of the good is rival. If I'm consuming a slice of pizza, you're not consuming it. And at the same time, it's easy for a merchant to sell you a slice of pizza, charge a price, and if you don't pay the price, well, then you don't get the pizza. This would be our first example right here. The next example for us to think about what would be referred to as club goods. Club goods have the same characteristic as private goods in the sense that you can be forced to pay for them, um, but in this case, they're non-rival. So what we want to think about now is something like satellite television. Well, satellite television, if you don't pay your monthly uh, subscription fee, then the, the satellite company can turn off the signal and you won't receive uh, any TV uh, channels in your home. But the difference is that that signal that you receive through the satellite system is something that you can receive and others can receive at the same time. Uh, and so in that sense, more than one person can enjoy access to the satellite TV programming. Uh, and because of that, it's non-rival. Um, the fact that it's non-rival, the fact that more than one person can enjoy it, doesn't necessarily mean that the market has to produce it. In this case, because the company can exclude non-payers, this is also a good that markets typically are able to produce. Let's move down here to the lower left-hand box. And now we're going to look at goods which are rival in nature uh, and they're difficult to exclude individuals. So what you want to think about are what are referred to as common resource goods. Common resource goods are things where we have to worry about exhausting them. So let's think about Alaskan king crab. The boats that go out in the ocean to capture the Alaskan king crabs in their nets. Um, it's not easy to exclude those boats. Boats can travel you know, from the United States or Japan or other countries. Uh, they can go into those fishing waters uh, and they can extract the crabs. Uh, the main reason why this is an interesting category is because the consumption is rival. When one boat catches a crab, another boat's not going to be able to capture that same crab. Uh, and so when one boat is successful, the other boats may not be able to get as much. This leads to a phenomenon that's very important. It's called the tragedy of the commons. And the tragedy of the commons is the idea that the individual incentives of the boats to capture the crabs can often lead to a particular species becoming extinct or exhausted. That could happen with Alaskan king crabs if those common resources are not managed effectively. So in this particular category, rather than thinking of the marketplace as being the, the driving element um, to make this market function work, you need to think about managing the amount of Alaskan king crabs by placing harvest limits on the number of crabs in any given um, yearly cycle. Uh, and so the government regulates the uh, amount of the common resource that can be harvested you can avoid the tragedy of the commons, which allows Alaskan king crab populations to continue to exist over time and allow additional uh, boats to come out in subsequent years uh, by keeping the population relatively stable. The last category that we want to think about are what are referred to as public goods. Public goods have two characteristics. They're non-rival and you can't exclude anyone. And because of that, there's no effective way that the market can produce public goods. And yet society still values many of these. Let me give you an example. Let's think about a tsunami warning system that gets installed along the coast uh, as a way of protecting the residents in the event that a tsunami might be coming their way. 
What will happen is the tsunami warning system, the sirens will start blaring and everyone will be instructed to move away from the coast. But you can be a person who doesn't live in that community, who doesn't pay any taxes, and that tsunami warning siren will go off and you'd be able to benefit from that. So because the community can't force you to pay, if you just happen to be there, you're going to hear the sound. And because everyone who's there can hear the sound at the same time, what you're doing is you're creating an enormous benefit to the public at large. Uh, and therefore, the idea that you could ask private residents to effectively contribute on their own to pay for a tsunami warning system wouldn't make any sense. Here you'd have to worry about what we talk about as the free rider problem. And the idea is, that even though everybody might want to have a tsunami warning system in place, everybody would come to the same conclusion that they would prefer not to pay for it. Uh, and therefore, you wouldn't be able to collect enough money from voluntary contributions to actually be able to fund your system. In which case, it's simply better to have the government come in, everyone recognizes we need it, everybody gets taxed a little bit, and therefore the system gets put in place. Um, and so the main distinction then to think about here is essentially you've got a division right here along the middle where markets do a pretty good job with private and club goods of supplying the right amount. Markets would have a great deal of difficulty in a common resource if it was not regulated because the tragedy of the commons would arise. Uh, and so therefore you need some form of regulation to keep markets working down here with these common resources. And then you just definitely need government provision when it comes to public goods uh, like a tsunami warning system. I hope this has been helpful and I hope you have a great day. Take care.